Welcome to the Tech Blog Writer Podcast, your guide to future tech trends and innovation in a language you understand. Now, over to your host, Neil Hughes. Welcome back to the Tech Blog Writer Podcast. This is one of those weeks where I feel incredibly privileged to be doing what I do every single day. Because yesterday we heard about a fantastic company and solution based in Armenia. And today I'm going to find out more about a solution that originated in the Netherlands. And it all began back in 2010 when New Day at Work was founded with one simple goal. Challenge that traditional desktop and all their supplies and rethink how employees get their job done. Now, with the rapid increase of web-based applications versus Windows-based applications, along with that urge for simplicity, it was time for them to face that challenge head on. So as a result, they built Workspace 365, which is a platform to simplify the way we all work. Essentially, it has everything that you need to get your job done, and it's all integrated into one workspace. And it does this by presenting employees with that complete workspace, including it in their web-based apps, Windows apps and Workspace 365 apps, all with one thing in mind, to simplify existing applications such as SharePoint, SAP, and all those other familiar business application names. So from a technology perspective, they chose to fully integrate with leading technologies such as Office 365, Citrix, and Windows as well. As well. So today's guest is Eric Nikolai, and he's the CEO of Workspace 365, whose challenge is simplifying complex IT cases to enable anyone to understand it and use it. Intrigued? I know I am. This is my kind of language that Eric was talking here. So buckle up and hold on tight so I can beam your ears all the way to the Netherlands, where Eric is waiting to speak with us all about Workspace 365. So a massive warm welcome to the show, Eric. Can you tell the listeners a little about who you are and what you do? Yeah, thanks for uh, having me, uh, Neil. So my name is Eric Nikolai. Uh, I founded New Day at Work in uh, 2010 and been working on this since. Fantastic. Now, since 2010, Workspace 365 has been simplifying and combining all of the business's applications, information, internet and document storage, all into one digital workspace for every organization. But can you tell me a little bit more about Workspace 365 and, and how you do this and delivering real value to businesses? Yeah, sure can. So what we saw in 2010 is that more and more companies were starting to use SaaS-based applications, so a browser-based application that run in the browser rather than being installed locally. And, and we thought if this is getting bigger and bigger, this would have a big impact on the way we consume applications. And more importantly, how this comes down to the desktop or where we work on on a single day. Um, so uh, we set ourselves the goal to integrate and aggregate everything what people are using today, just with the goal to simplify how we get our job done. Um, and uh, with the digital workspace, we mean that in a, every morning you just open up your workspace and all your apps and information that is relevant for you just comes together in a single place rather than having to go to three, four different locations to get to the relevant apps and to get to your information. And do you have any stories from any of your customers or partners that you can possibly share with people listening? Because we're going to have people listening all over the world. I think it'd be great to help them understand how it would actually work in their world and in their business. Yeah, sure. So we are a Dutch company, uh, as you can probably tell from my accent. Uh, while I've been traveling around the globe, uh, I used to never lose your, De- your Dutch accent, can you? <laughs> um, so we have customers in f- from ranging from New Zealand to, 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 to the US and everything in between. Uh, we have the strongest footprint in the Netherlands. This is our home market. And, and we see a, 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 that's a huge presentation from customers in healthcare and specifically care side. Um, and, and our biggest customers chunk is kind of the customers where employees are very mobile and not so much specifically touched and, and, and tied to one single device. Uh, and if you, for example, see in healthcare that we have customers, they have their employees working on, on patients on the, either on the bed or in the houses, and they just need to get to their, to their apps with a single click. And uh, we had customers where previously they had this kind of power on the laptop, wait like five, six minutes before their profile was enabled. Uh, and it was like a 10 minute visit to, 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 to customers. So by reducing the amount of time they spent on kind of uh, administrate, uh, administrating the things they need to either 
uh, write down from, from, from the patient or access the application. If you can do this in literally seconds rather than minutes, um, every, every visit becomes so much quicker. And I think that's just a specific example in healthcare, but we see the same in retail where we have employees who are not so IT savvy and, and in general, let's say desktops and, and workspaces can be consumed as quite complex where, where do I need to go? That question is already raising up their CPU on a daily basis. And if you can just simplify, so just you go to your workspace, everything is there. You don't have to worry about how it works. It just works for you. That just kind of helping people just to focus on what's important rather than to worry about their IT stuff. And I'm curious, though, I mean, what was the story behind Workspace 365? Uh, what happened back in 2010 to make you guys think, you know, enough is enough. We're going to build a better way of working. Yeah, good question. So the interesting dynamic is that in, in most of the of the co- companies, it's it's an IT team that manages the applications and the desktop. And then you have kind of the application team that thinks about what applications do we use and, and and with our background, we rather we kind of have two, two two kind of experiences. One is on the side of how to simplify the application side, and then the second thing is on the on the more the desktop side. And in 2010, it just came together. We thought, hey, this this application side and the IT infrastructure side will come together more and more. And and obviously, we were ahead of our times. Um, but if you look at where we are today, uh, I think it all started in thinking, how can we kind of integrate the application landscape and the IT infrastructure landscape into a single place rather than just trying to divide everything more and more? And like you said a few moments ago, you are based in the Netherlands. And on this Daily Tech podcast, I speak with people all over the world every single day. And I'm always quite keen to hear about how the startup economy is transforming the lives and the businesses of people all over the world. So can you share with me your experiences as a founder in the Netherlands that possibly might inspire others to follow you in your footsteps too? Uh, yeah, of course. So I think there are two sides on the question. Uh, one is that if you look as a startup, is there funding enough or is there customers enough willing to try something new? Uh, I think from that perspective, the Netherlands is great. We we are an innovative country. And if you see many kind of products uh, are successful worldwide are coming from the Netherlands and being uh, sold worldwide inside a product or services like we do with, with SaaS. But I think overall, as an as, as an entrepreneur, as, an, as, as, as a startup founder, um, the social security side of, of this in the Netherlands is, is quite odd because uh, the social security side for an employee is far greater than if you are working as, as, as a, your own, on your own. Like we have social security, if you, if you get unemployed as an employee in the company, you get your salary for the, for the coming two years or at least 70% of it. Uh, if you're an entrepreneur, the only thing you get is social welfare. So I think from the negative side of being uh, starting your business, there's a big chance it will fail. Um, so I think from that perspective, it's quite brave for people to, to start your own country if you have been in the benefit of just having a fully arranged work sphere where everything is paid for you and you just get your monthly salary. So from that perspective, I think if you look at the US, for example, where the social security is, is, is almost equal for let's say, being self-employed or being employed, uh, and think from that perspective, I think it's just a, yeah, a different economy that we have here than compared to some other countries in the globe. And that must put a bit of extra pressure on you as well, and possibly make you more determined to succeed as well, I would imagine. I think it's all about timing, right? So when we started the business, I, I had, let's say, no big expectation on life in regards to money or, or or cars or houses. So from that perspective, you can you can start very small and, and still aim, 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 let's say, very big for, for, for a success in how you want to grow your company. But I think if you have a family, if everything arranged and just you have the price of, let's say, your, your, your personal life, and of course, starting your business with, with the first few months of no salary or little salary uh, can be quite a burden to start. And I, when I was researching you, I did quickly learn that Works, Workspace 365 is also getting global recognition at the moment too. So can you tell me a little bit more about that and how it's being received by that global community out there? Yeah, sure. So it was, I think, the end of 2017 uh, when we start more and more, let's say, footprint and had to have more footprint in the Netherlands. Uh, we said, said, said to ourselves, how can we see such as some other success in other countries? And we said, for example, how can we be successful in Scandinavia, like Norway, Sweden? How can we get started in Australia, New Zealand, and the US? And we've seen many software companies, they want to go international and they start with, let's say, opening up a local office in, uh, let's say, either the US or go to Norway, go to Australia, and with the expenses that goes with it. And we said, we want to start each country with at least five partners as we, we offer our product via a complete partner network uh, worldwide. 
uh, we said we want to approach, let's say, a specific amount of partners in each country, uh, see the response, and and start working with them with a local team in the Netherlands. So no local people in Norway or Sweden or or Australia, just everything from the Netherlands. We we did realize there would be a big pressure on the different time zones, and sometimes we do demos in in New Zealand, uh, which is for us like six in the morning, and we end the evenings with with uh, say either the 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 the, the, where the West Coast from from the US being 11 hour, hour time in the evening. So we didn't realize there was a pressure on, on let's say, the local time zones. Uh, we just want to get some successes per country before we were even considering open up local offices because so having a start in a country, that's the biggest step. And if you do that with inexperienced people uh, with your product and services, uh, we just thought there was not a big chance that will succeed. Uh, we've been doing this for a year and a half now and we've seen partners coming on board from uh, ranging from the US to... Uh, to New Zealand. So we have 15 countries very active now uh, and it's just getting bigger rather than uh, and, and the, the countries are expanding as well. So, so far our, our strategy paid off. That's a fantastic story. It really is. And for any other business leaders that are listening to us today and they could be located anywhere in the world that make every one of their decisions based on the ROI for their company and they could be sat on the commute to the office and they could be sat there listening to our conversations and I would imagine they're going to have questions like why do I need a Workspace 365 or what do I need to start with Workspace 365 and of course where is our company data stored that one always crops up so can you possibly tackle a few of those questions? Yeah, sure. So as as you could tell from the name, Workspace 365 is it has a direct link to Office 365 from Microsoft. So to answer your last question first, um, we don't store any data in the workspace. We just aggregate the data which is already stored in data centers either from Microsoft or Google or any other data the centers uh, customers have uh, today, and they can range from from again from the country they're in or with a local IT partner. So. We see companies thinking about how we do we move forward to the desktop, right? So most companies are tied into a single device and for apps to literally have an unmanaged scenario where where do you go for your SaaS-based applications? So companies will think about how can we centralize all our account modern SaaS-based applications while still kind of integrate what they have today, like their local impl- uh, application they run in the data center. Uh, their file server, their SharePoint, the different team size, the, the documents they want to access. So we combine it all using Office 65, using uh, different identities to kind of get a streamlined access to all the apps and information you need. So as a startup founder in the Netherlands, what have been your biggest challenges in getting Workspace 365 to this point right now? And also, what opportunities are you looking to unlock in the future? Yeah, so I, th- I don't think my answer is typically tied to the Netherlands. I think for every startup, the, the, the most critical component is going to validate your value proposition. Um, so we did this, uh, and then uh, as we realized that the only way we could have a big impact globally is to work with the local partners or the local IT provider per country. Um, so as we have, let's say, a few per country, and for example, 50 in the Netherlands, our partner community is getting bigger and bigger. So one thing, we need to manage our, our increasing amount of partners worldwide. Uh, we need to think about the different needs per, per, per partner. But more importantly, the biggest challenge we face is like, how can we enable the partner from saying, hey, this is amazing, this is something we need to help them to be successful, right? To, to, to help people see, hey, this is what we need, to help them implement a value proposition that allows them to really tie this into their product. And I often compare our product as a service to an ingredient of a restaurant where we just provide an ingredient to make this beautiful lasagna as an Italian restaurant. And while we can provide this ingredient to build this digital workspace, in the end of the day for us, the IT partner is the one for putting it all together. And while we are just the ingredient, the end of the day, the presentation is hugely important for them to allow to, to make this and sell this. Uh, and to help a partner to build this value proposition and to understand all kind of what components are, are, are critical to be successful, I think for us that was the biggest challenge we faced. Um, apart from the product, let's say getting the product, product out and be, improve yourself every single day. If you don't understand what kind of drives your partners, it, it, it's, it's getting a bit, a bit of a challenge. And also, of course, what opportunities are you looking forward to unlocking in the future too? 
if you start your business and your product, you start with your first set of customers. And if you grow up as a company, we, we saw that our customers are getting bigger and bigger. We see that our partners are getting bigger and bigger. So that means that the opportunities we see today are very different than the opportunities we saw like five, six years ago, where five, six years ago, average company who used our product was like 50, 60 employees, where today we see more and more customers with, let's say, five, 6,000 or even more employees onboarding onto our platform. And and if you onboard that type of customers, you also see attention from different vendors in the market, and specifically for us in the kind of the um, the virtual desktop, the workspace uh, industry. Um, so the, the chance is that we see more and more OEM strategies working towards us, where we either integrate what is already available from Citrix, from VMware, from Microsoft, and the other way around as well. So. We see that as you grow up as a company, as you get more mature, you also see different partnership coming along the way rather than just battling on your own. And I think it was last week on Friday, June the 7th, you also announced some pretty big changes to Workspace 365. And I love how as a company, you're continuously involving and improving everything that you offer there. But can you, for anyone that missed that, can you share what that announcement entailed for everybody listening? Yeah, so I have a short answer for you in the longer one. I think let me start with the short one. Yeah. Uh, so we launched version three. Uh, so for us, we've been on version two for the last three years. So we launched version three, which has been a complete redesign of, of, our, of our product. Um, and the longer answer is, um, as our product designers worked on the new version of version three, uh, as we labeled it that back then, we said, okay, this is the whole new workspace. And then they said, we don't think the styling we have today, which had kind of round square corners, a blue logo, they said, we don't think this, this kind of ties to this whole modernized workspace we're about to launch uh, in June timeframe. Uh, so we decided it was time for a re- complete rebrand, uh, not just the product, also the logo, let's say everything, the website, and also the office. So we went from completely blue uh, to purple, pink, and orange. So orange to tie into the, to the Netherlands and purple to show how we can modernize and can be, be a little bit different than everyone in, in the city logo land who, who kind of follows for blue and red. Fantastic. And just before I let you go, could I ask that you remind everyone listening of where they can find you online? So what your website is, your social channels, and also how anyone listening could possibly contact a member of your team if they are left with any additional questions after listening to our conversation. Yes, yeah, sure. And I think the way we all do it, if you just Google, we type in workspace365.net or you just type in workspace 65 uh, you will find our website or our key contact information. And I think that's much easier than just to remind you where to send the email to or where to send, find us on Instagram or Facebook or anything else. So Google Works 55, you see how the product can, kind of fits, fits in all together and how we aggregate everything to a single single place for employees every single day. Excellent. Well, I'll add all the links to those to your website and the social channels on the blog post that will accompany this podcast. Uh, but more than anything, just a big thank you for coming on and joining me today. I've loved listening to your story, and I know it's going to bring so much value to people listening all over the world. So thanks for coming on today, Eric. Thank you, Neil. Thanks for having me today. I love how the role of technology in innovation has always caught Eric's interest especially because consumers appear to adapt to innovation so much earlier than businesses because as consumers, we synchronize our grocery lists with our housemates and and order food via the internet. Whereas the businesses, they're the ones that are getting left behind because they keep working with outdated software because, hey, that's what they've always done. So Eric's goal was simply to help businesses with technologies that can simplify their work. So they built an ecosystem to enable partners from every level to share knowledge in order to stimulate innovation. Now, innovating companies together using powerful technologies, for me, is a great example of how technology works best when it brings people together. But that's what I'm walking away from today's interview with. But now it's time for me to turn the virtual mic back to you and ask you what your thoughts were about today's conversation and any of the topics that we discussed there. And you can do that by emailing me techblogwriter at outlook.com, tweet me at Neil C. Hughes, or simply just drop by my website techblogwriter.co.uk. Now, I'm feeling a little bit sad today because it's been raining all week here in the UK. No sign of the hot British summer that we had last year. So I'm going to sit in a room and feel sorry for myself, waiting for you guys to send over your messages and prepare for tomorrow's guest. So a big thank you for listening. And until next time... Don't be a stranger. 
Thanks for listening to the Tech Blog Writer Podcast. Until next time, remember, technology is best when it brings people together.